All right, love, let's see where the story goes. That was a special John opening the book scene. You don't see those all the time. Hmm. And mobbed him. I always gave many rent credit for more sense than that, said Crow to Mrs. Crow. What in the world made him want to break into show business? Everybody gets that bug at one time or another, said Mrs. Crow, shouting above the uproar at the stage. Help, screamed Manny Rat, rising to the surface of the crowd like foam from an angry ocean. Sorry, said Crow, as the crowd rolled over the rat again. Once you go on stage, you'll have to take chances like the rest of us. Blitten, clawed, punched, and kicked by bird and beast, Manny Rat fought like a demon while the mouse and the child, having for the moment escaped demolishment by him, were in immediate danger of being trampled flat by enthusiasts who stormed the stage. Onward, said the child, wildly to no one in particular. <laughs> and upward, replied the father, as they felt themselves lifted into the air. <laughs> the repertory parrot. Seeing their plight had sailed into the tumult in a blur of bright feathers and frayed sweaters, <laughs> and now winged up into the night carrying the mouse and his child in her claws. Circling over the pines, the parrot looked down to the ass assess the situation. The entire cause of art company, with the exception of the luckless rabbit, were safe, at least until their next performance. The mass of struggling figures on stage separated and Manny Rats streaked off across the snow with several more of the diligent weasels in hot pursuit, while the rest of the audience abandoned themselves to a general riot and thereby purged themselves of all remaining pity and terror. That show business said it and I've had enough of it for a while. How about you? I think we have sufficiently furthered the cause of art, said the father, and I have no intention of continuing a theatrical career. Where are you bound for now? asked Tebre. I don't want to fly in circles all night. We don't know, said the father. Let it be south, then, said the parrot, because that's where I'm heading. I can use a vacation. She flew higher and set a straight course on the pine woods and the cause of art left behind. The parrot's wings fanned out gusts of cold air on the mouse and the child, and the darkness flowed by on either side. The moon had set, below them was dim and gray. The father and son felt as the wind raced like a road unwinding underneath their feet. As motionless, they traveled on. I wonder what happened to Manny Rats, said the child. I wonder if he got away. If he did, we can expect to see him again, said the father. He seems determined to smash us, and I don't think he'll give up. Neither will we, said the child. Will we, Papa? The father said nothing, and the child's only answer was the wind that whistled by him as they flew. We'll find the elephant and the seal, and we'll find the dollhouse, too, and we'll have our own territory, won't we, Papa? You simply won't understand how it is, said the father. How can we find anything? How can we ever hope to have our territory? But look how far we come, said the child, and think of all we've done. We got out of the dump, we came through the war safely, we saved the cause of art. We escaped after the attempted bank robbery and survived the war only because we had frog to help us, said the father. And we only saved the cause of art by making animals laugh at us. They laughed at us because we cannot even walk without being wound up. Because we have no teeth or claws and can do nothing but for ourselves. They laughed because we are ridiculous. Then he was silent, looking down at the child who hung from his arms in the darkness, the nutshell drum and good luck coin string around his neck. Believe me, said it. Crow doesn't think you're ridiculous, and neither do I. What you did was pretty clever, and that was brave, too. You might have been smashed by that mob. Yes, said the father, we're brave and clever, but not clever enough to wind ourselves up, unfortunately. If only we could. Ah, said it. There's nothing you can do about that. Although, come to think of it, maybe there is. What do you mean, asked the father. The old beaver pond isn't far to my way, said it. Old muskrat lives there. Ever heard of him? No, said the father. Well, said it. Except for Manny Rat, he's the only one I know who can do anything with clockwork. He figures out all kinds of things. She changed course and swung north. He's fixed broken wind-ups for the cause of art once or twice. She said, so maybe we can help you too. We're not broken, said the father. Not yet. I mean, maybe he can fix you up so you can wind yourselves up, said it. I've heard you can do almost anything. The parrot flew steadily on. The child hanging from his father's hands now saw again the bright star Sirius. It seemed to fly onward, keeping pace beside them through the distant sky. As before, the child found its light a comfort. His good luck coin clinked against his drum, and he now felt luckier than ever before. Maybe we shan't always be helpless, Papa, he said. Maybe we'll be self-winding someday. Maybe, said his father. Below them, scattered houses and farms gave ways to wooded hills, and the parrot flew lower. The trees came as close as it swooped to the glide over the valley where a stream widened to a frozen pond. At one end of the pond was an irregular dam made of saplings, cut branches, and below the dam was ice-covered stream continued through the valley. That's the beaver dam, said the parrot, as they flew over it. And that big snowy mound in the middle of the pond is the beaver lodge. Muskrat has a smaller one right over there, and the entrance tunnel is somewhere on the bank. I think I see his tracks. She landed on the edge of the pond and sat down the mice and the child on the ice. 
Muskrat will be sure to find you here, she said. And anybody can do anything for you, he can. Father and son felt a wing trip, brushed them softly, and they tipre took off. Goodbye and good luck, she said, and she was gone. Hmm. All right, love. We start chapter five tomorrow. And it's going to be a good one. Ooh, yes, it will be. Ooh, you can see all. Ooh, ooh. All right. I love you, Christy. Sleep when, keep camp, find a llama, carry on, and I will talk to you very soon. I love you, Christy. Sleep when, well, keep camp, find a llama, carry on, and it's Friday. So, good luck this weekend. Good luck this weekend with, um, oh, fudge, I hit, it's 11.30, it's 10.45, my brain is losing things. With Adam Reddy, and don't sweat it, don't sweat the small stuff, like spending time with people. I love you dearly, I will see you soon, love you more than ever, and I know you'll kick butt this weekend at the cycling camp. So, Christy. Sleep well. Keep camp. Find a llama. Carry on. Cycle. Oh, I'm tripping out of the camera. <laughs> Cycle well. Enjoy your weekend. Don't worry about Adam Reddy. Don't worry about me. I love you. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. I'll talk to you soon. Mwah.